a mountain range in Peru, part of the mighty Andes of South America. Its highest peak is Santa Rosa, rising to nearly 19,000 feet. Santa Rosa is a difficult climb. The lower slopes are steep, raw, and barren. Above lie glaciers and huge snowfields. This is a challenge soon to be faced by a team of young people who have never before climbed a mountain. George, according to our record, you've been involved in purse snatching, gang disorderlies, creating general unrest in the community, poor home adjustment, truancy, and runaway. I believe that is correct. Yeah, my first. Fiercely Puerto Rican, Jorge Rosado is leader of a gang called the Latin Souls. His nickname is Savage. Chicago's Department of Human Resources is considering him for a scholarship offered by Outward Bound. But can Savage adapt to a totally alien world? The uh, situation that arises now is the summertime and the hot weather and the uh, uh, George veering back to his gang activities and his uh, involvement in the gangs. And we would like to gear his leadership qualities more towards a, a positive program rather than uh, something negative such as gangs in the streets. <laughs> they sent me out the country, man. Out the country, man. Well, where you going, you know? My mom, man. <laughs> this man, man, he's stabbing with us, man. <laughs> no, I'm going through, man. He's jiving with us. I'm serious, it's a heart attack, man. Eighteen-year-old Amanda Cabot is a Harvard freshman and a member of a prominent Boston family. She is at home in the protected atmosphere of Eastern society. And this summer, she might have spent a leisurely vacation touring Europe. Instead, she feels a need to prove something to herself. Against the advice of her friends, Amanda has decided to take on the grueling ordeal of the Colorado Outward Bound School. You know, this is, this is really work, and I've never really been, been tested before. Maybe it's because I'm a girl, maybe it's because, I don't know, all sorts of things. Rick Polk, 16, has just returned to New York City from an exclusive New England prep school. For as long as Rick can remember, his summer activities had been planned by his father, a wealthy and influential businessman. This summer, Rick's father has enrolled him in Outward Bound, he feels the course will strengthen his son's self-confidence as well as toughen him physically. But Rick is uneasy. He's afraid Outward Bound may be more than he can handle. They meet in Denver, an unlikely mixture of rich and poor, honor students and juvenile delinquents. Some are defiant loners, others shy and insecure. Their paths cross here for the first time. Hi, Outward Bound? Yeah, Rick Polk from New York. Okay, Rick, go on board. Amanda Cabot? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So it begins. Nineteen young people with very little in common. Ray from Chicago. Red Cloud Camp in the Rockies, they meet Terry Burnell, their course director. He attended an outward bound school in his native England and went on to join major mountaineering expeditions to the Himalayas and the Andes. Hi, Terry. How are you doing? The outward bound program is designed to help young people discover themselves as they go beyond their physical and emotional limits. For Terry Burnell, this goal is a personal commitment. I'm the course director and I'd like to welcome you to Outward Bound and uh, welcome you to the San Juan Mountains in particular. I'd like to introduce the instructors. They'll call out your names and that's, that'll be your patrol. If you pick up your, uh, your duffel bag and go with your instructor to the area that, uh, that he assigns. Matt Wells here and Matt will call out the nine names and why don't you go with him. The people I call out, I'd like to have line up behind me and we'll just move off to the right. Rick Polk. Meredith Johnson, 
Savage Rosado. If you've got any uppers or downers or any uh, any grass, why don't you uh, why don't you just put it in here? This trip's going to be uh, enough of a high without uh, without using that stuff. After you fill them in and uh, put your vibrams in there, what I want to do is we'll take a short hike up to uh, up to the equipment room and issue you uh, your equipment. The shock of the short hike initiates the group into the world of Outward Bound. Okay, come here, let me explain to you about the food. Okay, there's uh, the supper, breakfast and lunch here. You guys are going to have to sort it out. And uh, if you eat it all tonight, well, that's your, uh, that's your hard lines. Well, that's it until tomorrow evening. So man, don't nobody tell me what to eat, what not to eat, man. If I feel like eating, I eat, man. Ignoring Perry's advice, Savage devours an entire day's rations. He will go hungry until tomorrow night. If you want to eat, ain't nobody gonna stop you, but I'm gonna eat. That's it. Okay, everyone up, let's go. Okay, everyone up. Get going. I don't think I'm gonna like this place. I never got along with Anglos. It's always a hassle. I don't feel right with these people. What time is it anyway? It's five o'clock. Okay, you've got your towels? Okay, it's gonna be cold down there, and I want you to all have uh, warm shirts or sweaters before we leave. We're gonna keep a slow jog down to the river, and then we're in, okay? You ready? Uh, let's go. Let's go. After a mile run, the patrol is relieved when their instructor takes them for a morning dip. But fed by melting snow, the river is near freezing and painfully cold. The ropes course will test the physical abilities of each student. As Amanda tries to walk the log, she is being judged for balance and coordination. Well, watch him in case his head catches against the, the tree. Rick is next as the instructors determine who might need extra help to get through the course. Come on. Terry is concerned that Savage is hostile to authority. How you doing, Savage? Lean more over to me. Lean more he over tests to Savage's way. willingness to okay, follow now. orders. Go on. Let go. Let go of everything. Everything. Fall off. OK, we have a little problem. We've got a 14-foot <coughs> wall, and I want you to get everybody over it. You've got uh, 30 seconds to plan it, and then we'll go. OK, time starts right now. A 14-foot wall is the first obstacle they must overcome together. The time has come for a group of strangers to think and act as a team. A little fruit. OK. Start and coming. Okay, get inside. 
of Boston. Getting the last one up the wall is the toughest part of the problem. Go, go, Boston. Go, Boston. Go, Boston. Okay, oh, oh, get on the oh, oh, Get on the big job. Come on. Oh, come on. Pull him up. Pull him up. Go, on, pull him up. Okay. Pull up. Uh, hey, let him go, Boston. No way. Uh, well, you're gonna have to do this. Just climb right up, my. All right, boss. We're gonna try something new this time. Come on, John. Let's go. Uh, Everybody get a hand in there. Come on, boss. Yeah, I'll just wait for that, boss. Come on, come on. We're gonna go down with it. Hang him, hang him. Success. They have scaled a 14-foot wall. Their first step toward climbing Santa Rosa Peak, nearly 19,000 feet high. a week of training at Red Cloud Camp in the Rockies. They journeyed deeper into the wilderness, down the Gunnison River. From now on, the patrol will be constantly on the move. They set out on a three-day forced march, an ordeal to build their endurance. Weighed down by food, tents, and mountaineering gear, they discover muscles they never knew they had. With every step, the packs get heavier and heavier. The first day out is agony. As the hours drag on, many ask themselves the same question. Is it worth it? All these changes they put me through. I had a choice between jail and this. I think I made a mistake. Come on, Sally. So what's wrong? What you know what is this program anyway, man? Yeah, I ain't teaching nobody nothing. Just put on a pack and then get out here and walk around this funky place like this, man. We ain't got no water. Y'all ain't doing nothing. I'm going home. You're not. I tell you, you're not going home. The, the damn bus is not going to come until, until another 23 days, and you're not going to go. There's no way that you can find your way out of these mountains. There's no way. What are you, you going to do with him? Are you going to help him or what? 
Is your pack too heavy for you? Dude, Look like how much stuff I got. I got that rope well, maybe and mat. Different from man. Maybe, maybe it's I'll tell you what, man. Shit. I carry the rope. If the rope is going to make that big with you, I'll carry your rope. You can take your rope. Maybe somebody else can take something else for you. Buster, Buster, give me my stuff. Let me have my stuff, man. Right. You feel like carrying it? I'll carry it, man. Let's stay nice and close together. Let nobody get too far in front. Climbing and rappelling are probably the two most dangerous things that we could do. But not dangerous because, because of what the cliff is going to do. They're dangerous because of what you guys do when you're up there. And mountaineering accidents happen when people are not thinking, when they do stupid things, when you're tired. What I want to do with you today is, is go through with this rock climbing and rappelling. Yes, you shouldn't even be here, man. Well, I'm here. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. What? Steady, steady, steady. Sorry, I yelled so much. Ungulate! Climbing! Climb! I don't have any more. Just look around. There's lots of them there. Fine! Get back on the rough. Are you going to sit there all day? Well, I can't come up. Yes, you can if you try. Take six inches at a time and work it out. Just work it out, Rick. How you doing? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. Still want to go down? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What's wrong with your legs? What's wrong with you? I don't know. They just hurt. Everybody else has climbed it. <laughs> up, up, up. Come on, stand up on your left foot. Get right in the back. 
don't stand on the rope. Sorry. Off the ladder. The lamp. How's that? Hectic. Okay, do you want to join the climb now? No. no. Well, no how are we, no way. How are we going to get up there? That's another 200 feet. No any way is up. Unless you want to sit here all night. I guess we sit here then. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and repelling is a way to get down the rock face. Or to get down an ice cliff, or to get down anywhere, anywhere. And uh, very briefly, I just want to tell you, show you how to do it, what to do, and then we're going to do it. John? I'm not going to go. Turn around no. and face me. Hey, look at me. I want you to get to the edge there, and I want you to break yourself. OK, break yourself. Take your other hand off the rope. Take it off. Look down. Look down. Take it off. Go. It's not a matter of what you want to do, you've got to do it, OK? Is there another way listen, down? Listen, 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 look at me, look at me, listen. I don't know. Listen, 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 there's a problem with you. Listen. I don't know what you might not want to do a lot of things, a lot of things you don't want to do when you've finally done them for the best, OK? Now listen, just get squared away. Take, take the sand off the room. Take it off. No! Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Now look, you've got all your weight in the palm of that hand, okay? All right. What's your name? Jerry. Where are you from? Bay City, Michigan. Okay, let's let's get down there from Michigan. Come on. Come on now. There's no way up now. Keep going. Ripping down now, God. Not as bad as it seemed, will it? No, hey. I'm not. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Get all your weight on the rope. All your weight on the rope. Okay, now start walking back. What if I fall? You're not gonna fall. He's got you right there. Right, Buster? Uh, okay. Look at me. Put all your weight on the rope. No, I can't go. Put all your weight on the rope. Get all your weight on it. Okay? No. I'm not gonna go. No way. I'm not gonna go. Okay. Now look. He's got you on this rope. There's no way you can go anywhere, okay? Yeah. This hand, you just let it slide along the rope, okay? And this hand, you bring it over, over your backside, okay? Okay, now, move one foot down at a time. Move your left foot down. Okay? How's that? I don't know. You don't want to come back up, do you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Just keep going now.
As the patrol moves into the final phase of training, they feel fit, confident, and ready for anything, even trusting their lives to a zip wire stretched across a deep gorge. Go ahead, Amanda. Really? Go ahead, Two weeks, Amanda Cabot of Boston and Rick Polk of New York have left the security of city life far behind. Savage Rosado has come a long way from the rooftops and back alleys of Chicago's South Side. For the rest of the course, the patrol will remain at elevations between 11,000 and 14,000 feet. The sudden snowstorms and thin air of the high Rockies will prepare them for the harsh conditions they can expect in the Peruvian Andes. After days of tasteless, dehydrated rations, they crave anything that looks or tastes like real food. OK, stop it. Look, if you're going to behave like animals, you can go back and eat the flowers. But you're going to treat the food with the respect, and let's, let's pick it back up in there and divide it out in, a, in some sort of reasonable manner. As the course continues, the pressures of group living increase. There is a growing tendency for each to draw into himself, to escape from the responsibilities they all share. Some feel they are doing more than their part around the camp. It's over seemingly small things that personality clashes can develop. Learning to handle emotional conflict is an important part of the outward bound experience. Thanks a lot. How's the water? It's boiling. Here I am back in the kitchen again, you know. Here I am head cook or something like that, you know. Outward Bound encourages the group to bring their feelings into the open. A lot of us notice a lot of things about that. Uh, when it comes down to one thing, that Amanda don't be doing too much. Just lately, you know, it seems like Amanda's been helping. But before, you know, I didn't think she was doing nothing, lady. I just thought you were there, you know. You check everybody out and see what they were doing, and then come time for dinner, you'd eat, you know, check everybody out a little further, and then, you know, go off into your own little bag. Maybe I haven't done my share. I didn't, I didn't think it was as drastic, and, I don't know, I guess now is as good a time as any to apologize, you know, but one thing that, that really bugs me is that, I don't know, it's so easy to lose your cool and say things, you know, let things slip out. Easygoing people are easygoing. Like, I'll be your best friend, but if you're wrong, you're dead wrong, and you don't want to admit it, there's something wrong with you. What about a little patience? Patience? Well, I've got patience, you know. Have you ever had to deal with guys like this before, Amanda? No. Huh? You feel, you know, a little lost? I don't know, it seems like I'm coming down on you, man. but I just want to know, want you to know where I'm coming from. It seems to me like you're getting upset, like, not, nah, you know, that's not... I'm not, at least I'm not trying to upset you anything. I'm just, you know, trying to express some of my feelings. And it looks like Susie over there, you know, it looks like she's getting upset with us too. But I mean, I'm the type of person that, you know, I can only hold feelings, you know, so long. I just want you to really, you know, be you, be, you know, be Amanda Cabot. And, you know, because you're out in the mountains, you're not being watched by society. Now, you, you know, you're Amanda Cabot. I, I don't know, it just seems that... Maybe I put myself off at the beginning. For a little protection, you know. When you talk to people, it seems like you're just standing there quoting something like something Shakespeare would say, and you know, it's not you. you know, how can we, you know, how can we get together and, and you know, make it a, make it a good experience for you, make it a good experience for the group? And... I couldn't possibly say. I, I've got a lot more respect for any of these guys than somebody like me. And, I don't know, I didn't mean to put myself off on a pedestal. You know, you say, 
come down to our level. What makes you think that I'm any higher than anybody else? I consider myself far at a far greater loss. That's what I'm saying. You know, wind down. It seems like you're still caught up, like, you know, at the Harvard status thing. Social structures don't matter, you know? And I just think, your background, I don't think you, you think I'm just as funny as maybe I think you, but it doesn't mean that anybody's higher or lower. It just means that we're different. And because I talk the way I do, it doesn't mean that I'm putting on an act. It means that that's as much a part of me as the way you talk is a part of you. You know, you can, you can simplify so much and you can live for today just so much. But there's a lot of times in life where, you know, today, today is important. But you've got a lot of responsibilities and you just can't live for today. Here I am coming down on you and I really feel guilty because, you know, if I've hurt somebody's feelings, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm just the type of person who, you know, likes to say what they feel. Expressing feelings may be painful, but it's as important as any physical challenge they may face. solo. For three days and three nights with only minimum rations, each person will be completely alone. It's a time for contemplation, a chance to reflect on what has happened and what lies ahead. member of the group has his own reasons for continuing the course. Savage finds strength in the idea that he could be the first Puerto Rican to climb in the Andes. He wants to plant his cap on a mountain top for his people. Before leaving for South America, the entire expedition must face one more challenge. Hey, there's one final physical thing that I would like to do before we go to Peru, and that's to run the 10 mile marathon. And during this marathon, you're going to hear two voices. You're going to hear a voice when it starts to get really hard. You're going to hear a voice that says, why don't you just ease up? Why don't you just forget about running? And then there's another voice you're going to hear that says, no, keep going. Really, really stay with it. And those two voices we're going to be hearing the whole time we're on the mountain in Peru. for nearly an hour for the last to finish. Meredith Johnson from Texas. To the patrol, it's not only the first to come in that counts, but the last. Because now that Tex has made it, they can all go to Peru together. Lima, Peru. The outward bound expedition is acclimated to the thin air of Colorado's high Rockies. Now they must move quickly from sea level to 11,000 feet, so their bodies will remain accustomed to high altitudes.
after a twelve hour trip they reach eleven thousand feet the expedition can now afford to stop briefly at the remote village of our yacht high in the peruvian andes As the expedition nears 15,000 feet, weather conditions take a turn for the worse. From base camp, they cannot even see the peak they came 5,000 miles to climb. Now the weather's gonna, gonna be like this for another two or three days, and uh, we gotta make a plan, and uh, a plan of attack, and, and put all our, all our effort into the mountain. We might get 15 people to the top, we might only get one person to the top. But that's the, the whole thing of mountaineering. Well, our goal should be to, to get as many people to the top as possible. If it is we only get one person, that's the game, you know. If we get all 19 to the top, that'll be great. It's gonna be hard work, it's gonna be down. You've always gotta keep it in mind that, that we've got that goal and we're all committed to it. Like, I wanna be the first Puerto Rican to climb the Andes, and if I can climb the Andes, I'm gonna do that, you know? Hey, why don't you ask him why he's climbing this mountain, Savage? We're going there, right? Yeah. You better find a better reason to climb this mountain, or you ain't gonna make it. But at least, see, I'm here and I'm wearing this flag just to show people that I can do it too, you know? And my people out there too. After four days of waiting, the weather clears. From base camp, they set out to establish Camp One, a first foothold on the slopes of Santa Rosa. them across a massive glacier. The climbers test every step, picking their way cautiously over snow bridges that can collapse without warning. They have entered a maze of ice blocks and hidden crevasses. of the first day's climb, the expedition pitches Camp 1 at 17,000 feet. At this altitude, all physical exertion is difficult. The climbers lose their appetite and must force down the high-protein food they need for energy. To avoid dehydration, each must drink at least four quarts of liquid a day. They make lemonade with melted snow and store it for the next day's climb. As the expedition leaves Camp 1, the route becomes steeper and the weather more unpredictable. Their goal is still far in the distance. They will have to establish at least one more camp before their summit attempt. A month ago, many of these young people had never seen a mountain. Now, roped together as a team, they share the intense physical hardships of high-altitude mountaineering as they approach 18,000 feet. Camp two, silent and cold. All thoughts are on tomorrow, 
and the final climb. It's a perfect day for the climb to the summit, but for some, a disappointment. Breathe deep in and out through your mouth. Hey, Matt, could you bring me that little oxygen bottle out there? Okay, look, you got a thing called pulmonary edema. Well, it's not serious, but guys get it sometimes when they go up high. There you go. Thanks. Now, what we're going to do is have you breathe on this oxygen for about half an hour or so, okay? By then, you'll be feeling a lot better. And at that point, I think you'll be able to walk down out of here. And once we get you lower to the hospital with some more oxygen, you'll feel pretty good, okay? You just take it easy for a while. Once you get one, let's go. Thanks. And what we're going to do is have you breathe on this oxygen for about half an hour or so, okay? By then, you'll be feeling a lot better. And at that point, I think you'll be able to walk down out of here. And once we get you lower to the hospital with some more oxygen, you'll feel pretty good, okay? You just take it easy for a while. Once you, get, once, once you breathe this for a while, you'll be feeling a lot better. Come on, Boston, let's go. Come on, get out of there. Boston. What? Come on, what's going on? Let's get out of here. I ain't going. Why not? Because I can't breathe, and my feet are cold, and I ain't climbing no mountain. Listen, we've been through all this before. I think you can do it. I ain't going. Okay, that's all right, fine. You just have it that way. We'll be back later. Okay, we'll okay. see you later. For the final ascent, they're divided into small groups, each with an instructor. The summit of Santa Rosa is 18,715 feet high. First on the rope is Rick. Close behind is Savage, then Buster. For six weeks, the patrol has experienced the challenges and hardships of Outward Bound. A bond of friendship has grown among them. And today, the group shares in the personal goal of one member. Savage Rosado, a Puerto Rican from the streets of Chicago, has dreamed of planting his cap on a mountaintop for his people. Oh,
Come on, man. Come on. Puerto Rico. All right. Of the 19 outward bound students who went to Peru, 14 reached the summit of Santa Rosa. If only one had made it, that would have been cause enough for celebration. A group of young people have not only climbed a difficult mountain, they have also been exposed to new and unfamiliar values. When they return home, they may well question a life they once took for granted. Savage Rosado may find it difficult to readjust to the harsh realities of Chicago's South Side. Other problems may face Rick Polk and Amanda Cabot. But because all of them have been pushed beyond their physical and emotional limits, their lives will never be the same. for the birds. 